I've spent the last three months rebuilding this total Corvette that I bought from a wrecked car auction with the goal of driving it across the country to an event in Las Vegas called SEMA Fest. After replacing the motor, upgrading the internals, and adding a supercharger, we put it to the test and made a substantial amount of power. At 70% throttle, we made 689 horsepower. And sadly, we weren't able to test what 100% throttle would have done because we don't have the proper fuel pump. But because the car runs and drives, we need to get it ready for SEMA Fest. So we added the wheels, the wraps, and all the other accessories to make this car look perfect. After spending sleepless nights trying to get this car ready in time, just uh, oh my f God, it's one o'clock in the morning. We could finally hit the road with less than 24 hours before the show starts. But five hours in, we noticed a problem. We started the car and saw a bunch of smoke come out from the engine and from underneath the car and from the exhaust. And we didn't know what it was. So as we inspected a little bit more, we saw that it was oil coming from inside of the exhaust. Now we're probably 400 miles away from the house right now. We just don't know what to do right now. So we might stay the night at a hotel. It's almost too much smoke to move forward. We want to do a compression test and see what's going on and figure out if there's issues going on here. So because the engine is smoking, we decided to stay the night in a hotel and figure out what's wrong with the Corvette in the morning. Yeah, she's frosty. Okay, we're gonna give it a test start. We're able to find an auto zone oh, and so an O'Reilly right next to each other, so we have too many tools to be able to use. I believe our plan of attack here is to find out which bank on what side is producing most of the oil. It looks like possibly both sides are. Yeah. Hey there. We need to buy everything. I feel like I'm not really a fan of this place anymore. I've been in here too much. <laughs> Now we're taking out uh, one spark plug. We're gonna check compression on it, cylinder by cylinder, and seeing if this motor is good or where our problem lies. So if we're not reading good compression, what, what do we do? Call Weston. Go to tow? <laughs> We've just been killing ourselves, making this car come to life day in and day out. And now we're on our way to SEMA and this has happened. It's just very unfortunate, but we're at a point where it's probably not going to be going to SEMA anymore, which is heartbreaking. We did everything in our power to make sure that this car was SEMA ready. And that's not happening. So now I'm writing down each cylinder compression test and anything else we might need to know to get this car going good, I guess. That's a lot of oil. That is a lot. 180, that's good. Interesting, so far so good, but leaving us with more questions. Cylinder number three, okay, get it. Here's the key. So it looks like for cylinder number seven, we had a 160. I'm letting it hold for a little bit longer to see if it's gonna continue climbing down. Right now it's at a one, 160, 158. Nate is talking to the guys at Magnuson. We're trying to figure out if this setup is correct. We're just trying to figure out if we can even continue the trip. And right now we're getting the green light that we can, but you know, this, the amount of oil that's burning that's going into the cab is kind of not my favorite. Something I noticed when I first picked the Corvette up was that there is a giant hole in the bottom of the car that's allowing all the smoke from the engine to get into the cabin. The smoke is literally coming into the, the cab of the car and it stings my eye, it hurts my throat, it's my face. Numb. It's so weird. I honestly believe it was from the forklift that lifted my car into my trailer. The smoke and fumes coming from the engine isn't safe to breathe, and it started causing a problem for Nate and I with another 15 hours left to drive. He said to keep driving. Really? So I guess we've gotten the green light to continue going, and now I have to grab a whole five quarts of oil. I think that should be it. All right, total damage is 147.44. It's time for us to get back on the road and seeing how the car acts. We're gonna drive a little bit closer towards Las Vegas, but uh, the deadline is becoming closer and closer where we're gonna miss SEMA if we don't leave soon. That's where we're at now. So the reason why 
why we're smelling all these fumes inside of the car is because we had to cut the back of the fiberglass like cowling or whatever, which allows the cabin airflow filter to go through from outside to inside. We still have so much like vacuum pressure within the cab that it's still pulling air in a little bit, which kind of over time makes it a lot. So that is allowing the air to come into the cabin air filter. So I decided to wrap the cabin air filter with just a plastic bag, shove it back in and hopefully that the air would allow itself to go through it and then it would minimize it at least to like, like at least 70%, which is a lot better than what we're dealing with right now. Like, all right, we'll let you know how that works, but that's what we did for now. That's our quick fix. Also, each stop, we have to add at least one or two quarts of oil. One quart per three quarters tank. Because that's how much it's burning per full tank. That's another thing we had to do that we're dealing with. So it's the brakes, it's the O2 sensor, it's the burning oil, it's the coming of that cabin air filter. So far, this has been an early road trip. And also that the, the radio doesn't work, which that is the saddest thing ever because when I got this car, it did. And the steering wheel is very sideways. That is straight up and down. That is what it's supposed to be. Above other than that, so far so good. Okay, just so you know, that did not fix it. It's still oh, really geez. bad, but we're further now. All right, so our new way for avoiding the smoke is to roll up the windows. And then what we do is we quickly turn on the car and we turn on the recirculative, AC, whatever the frick it's called. I don't see a lot of smoke. I'll be on the back. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> Sketchy. It's Arizona. So now that we have made it to Vegas, the next thing we have to do is get the hood and the river mirrors. We need to get them wrapped. We need to make it into the SEMA Fest by 3 p.m. We only slept like two hours in the Walmart parking lot. This has been an early adventure, but we, we made it. So right now, we were supposed to be on our way to a wrap shop that we have planned to go to, but they canceled last minute. So we randomly just hit up the first shop that popped up on uh, our maps when we looked up uh, any wrap shop in Las Vegas, which was Dipped Auto Works. And uh, now we're on our way to them because they said they would be willing to take on this project, which is absolutely insane. So we're on our way over there now. Uh, they'll be able to get the hood and the rear mirrors done. And if, if they could possibly do the dig house too, which is a lot, that takes a lot of work to get all that done. But if they can, that would be insane. All right, so this guy is so sick. He literally is like, let's make it happen, let's do it. I can't believe you guys drove here in this car, which I can't believe we did either. Now she's going in for a little bit of surgery. Yeah, I'm doing good from the outside. This is the moment where the car, to me, becomes complete. Even though I need some wheels, to me, when I walk back up to the car, it looks like it's done. And so that's what makes me so stoked about this situation here, is that it feels like it's about to be done, with this hood being completed. <laughs> it's literally f***ing done! So freaking good. Yeah. Black was the way to go, for sure. This is sick. <laughs> Stayed up all night to get here, and we're literally leaving here at what five o'clock? Yeah, we're late. Five thirty-six. All right, we're late. Hi there. Hi there. We're with Magnuson Terrace. Uh, Magnuson. Magnuson Supercharger. Yeah. All right, so we're waiting for our escort, but we're here, and there's the the burn yard right there. That's crazy. Circus. Literally, Nitro Circus is right there, so I'm gonna hit this. I'm gonna hit those jumps literally later. I'm gonna f for sure be riding. That's gonna be sick. 
What the fuck? Look at that. That's Magnuson right there. Bro, the show is right there for Nitro. I'm, I'm literally gonna be in it. So sick. Bro, I can't believe I'm gonna be right there. All right, so we're leaving the car here and we're gonna show up tomorrow for the show now that the car is all unloaded. After driving the car, we've built 1,500 miles. We actually made it to the last day of SEMA. Right after SEMA was over, I started riding in the Nitro Circus show. So right across from the Magnuson booth, they had this. This is Nitro Circus, and I actually flew around the country doing this with them. So I'm about to do my first show with Nitro at SEMA Fest. <laughs> This way. Look at the. Look at that. I just want you to look for a second, okay? Just don't look, because you're about to see my car. So. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't want you to look. Keep looking at me. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now I guess you can look at it. Oh my gosh. Do you That's like insane. it? Insane. You like it? Yes. It doesn't even look like the same car. Okay. <laughs> so, I know that you like reclinable seats. Yeah. So I made sure that these were reclinable. Not only for you, but for me, I too. Say, no, no, but it was... that for me only. But also, they're heated seats. That's cooler than my car. Same. I got that for you. Thank you. Also for me. <laughs> <laughs> now, in between having my car at SEMA Fest, going to Nitro Circus, Hoonigan is holding an event here where they're kick-flipping a limo through two RVs. <laughs> First try. So while the event ended last night, Nate actually drove the car over here and dropped it off for me because it's been my first time since I've seen Hannah since, you know, I really even started building this thing. So we needed some time together. This is Hannah's first drive in the Corvette. Keep it on like that for now. Oh my god. I feel like I don't know. Oh my goodness. So 
right now I'm dropping out the car to Alex. He's gonna align this car, give it corner balancing, as this car makes so much power, it needs to be put down perfectly across the rear tires. And also, while drifting, it needs to have the perfect alignment, so the angle is perfect, and just overall everything. I mean, the steering wheel, like, this is straight right now. That's not good, so. Overall, this needs like a professional alignment, as it's like a really high-end car, not just a regular old, uh, is that a Type R, actually? Wait, that's a really nice car, too, kind of. <laughs> Is that gnarly sounding? That's the pop, I just was like not expecting that from this car. I love the tunnel. No, the tunnel is crazier because it really shows you how loud it is. Oh my gosh! It's so much louder in the tunnel for sure. So I just got it off the rack from Alex's alignment. And I'm gonna, I don't know why I drifted it, but I, I wanted to show it. So here, just jump in real quick. So an alignment is really important in order for the car to be something somewhat stable for you to drive, especially when putting so many aftermarket parts on. So I'm just gonna drift it real quick. So look at this. Steering wheel's completely straight. That's nice. Now the VQ Carbon Custom steering wheel looks really nice. But this is the best thing. These are all my other marks that I just made. But to show how easy it is without an e-brake, installed yet that this thing handles pretty well. better than it handled before like when I wanted to try to drift it it like didn't want to go it wanted to grip up which is a good thing but at the same time it wouldn't be because this car is half drift half like canyon car half top cross country car like half everything car so it handles so well now thanks to RMC Motorsports for the for the alignment it was absolutely amazing so this is sick so if you're ever in Vegas and you want a professional alignment like your car needs to be perfect exactly the way you want it he will get it done like he's literally like go test drive it if you don't like it we'll switch some things up but it's perfect. It's more than I could ever ask for. We got the car to SEMA Fest and the show went great, but there's still some issues with the car that need to be ironed out so I can push the car to its limits and feel the power that was added. I can't push the throttle down more than 70% because of the oil that's burning and a weak fuel pump. If I go any harder on the car, it could literally blow up. I'll be driving the car to California to put the final touches on the Corvette and see how much power this thing can really make. I hop out the car, leave the motor running. Why you always talking like you know something?